All right. Oops. I don't know what I did. All right. Good afternoon. I am going to do, this is going to be maybe a little bit longer than last time, but this is an overview of what's happening in the chapter. It's primarily looking at self-regulated learning, but we're also diving into one of my favorite topics, which is positive psychology and positivity. So before we get started, these are the questions that I ask at the beginning of the chapter. When my daughter was in, I'm not sure if it was elementary school or the very beginning of middle school, she had a teacher, when they would get started on something new, he would say, let's activate your schema, which means we're going to move on to something new, but before we do that, we're going to see what do you already know about this. I already talked about this a little bit uh, when, when we were talking about neurons. Okay, so <clears throat> think of something that you do well now, but you didn't always do well. So I always like to think about driving. I remember when I was a brand new driver, I had my hands at 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock, and I focused completely on the road, and I... Um, you know, I was very cautious about changing lanes and I didn't want to go on the highway. And now, unfortunately, it's a little bit of a habit. So maybe it's not such a great thing because I'm not always paying attention, but it's a very different situation. Well, how did I get to that skill level? Honestly, practice, an awful lot of practice. Uh, tying my shoes. All right, something right now, well, Something I do well now. I, I'm I'm at the beginning stages of learning how to use certain power tools. Uh, last year I got a uh, finish nailer, a nail gun, and the first time I used it, I was very cautious. And today I was putting up uh, a wall, and I was like, bang, 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 bang. So, well, how did I get better? Mm. Practice, paying attention to when I made mistakes. The number of shiners that I made, which is when you shoot a nail and rather than going straight into the wood, it actually comes out the side. So um, I don't think I did any of them today. But anyways, if I did, they're behind the wall, so no one will know. Okay, but anyways, enough about me. What about you? Okay, so I really seriously pause this. Think about something that you do well now that you didn't always do well and how did you get there? Then what I want you to do is think about this in terms of your academic life. And I'm focusing mostly on reading because reading is one of the most, if not the most crucial skill that you will have in college. There are students who will tell me, oh, I never read. I, I well, okay, I don't, number one, that, that cuts me to the quick because I always tell people I was born with a book in my hand, but there is so much information that is conveyed to you via the printed word. Okay, so so we're looking at the academic world. How do you, not, not a general person, but you in particular, how do you know if you've understood something that you read? Because I know a lot of times I see people reading and I swear if I said to them, what did you read? You would say two pages because your eyes are passing over it, but your brain is not engaged. I've actually even seen people highlighting. And afterwards I say, well, what did you highlight? And they will say, I really don't know. Okay, so how do you know if you've understood something that you read? <clears throat> Still on that same idea, how do you know if you have studied enough or if you've studied effectively? So this chapter we are looking at uh, self-regulation of learning. Next chapter, we're going to look at some more study skills and test-taking skills. And so these, this, these, this chapter leads right into the next chapter. And then, what do you do to make the most of your homework? Whatever homework it is that you've been assigned. Is it reading? Is it math problems? Is it writing an essay? Is it studying? All right, so these are things that I want you to think about. I want you to really think about how you learn and how you pay attention to your learning before you get into reading this chapter. Okay, so the, the 
chapter actually starts with something called, and I just went blank, Albert Bandura's work on self-efficacy, which is our, our belief that we are competent. Okay, so, so read that because that, that lays the foundation for this idea of self-regulated learning. So self-regulated learning is a cycle. So we're going to start at the green. What you have to do is plan. You set goals. You come up with your strategy. Does this sound familiar at all? And this planning, goal setting, strategizing leads to actually, aha, using the strategies. I know some of us are great planners, but when it comes to putting the plan into operation, we're not so great. So you use the strategies and you monitor your performance. How am I doing on this? All right, once you've done that, you reflect on your performance. Okay, so those are the, the steps. And then that leads to you use the results, this reflection, to plan your next, to, to do your next planning. And I'm sorry, I forgot who wrote this. Was it Marie? Was it Mary? I, you know, since I don't have faces and, and um, voices, it's hard. Someone talked about doing something very similar to, to this about setting at the, it, it's not for learning, but at the beginning, early in the morning saying, what am I going to do this today? And then at the end of the day, reflecting on the performance, which can help you set plan, make a plan for the next day. Okay. <clears throat> so shout out to somebody whose name begins with M. <laughs> All right. The, here's another, just another diagram to look at. I just thought it was kind of interesting because it's look, we're going to relate self-regulated learning to some previous concepts. So your planning stage, you are goal setting, you are managing your time, or we know you really can't manage your time. You can't do anything to time unless you are Superman and can fly backwards around the earth and make it rotate backwards. You can manage yourself and how you spend your time. You, this enabling, I know the word enable has a bad connotation in our society, but what are you putting in place to enable you to do your, you know, to do what you need to do? And, wow, something that everybody just about said they have problems with asking for help. Okay. Um, I'm going to sidetrack here for just a second. I get it. I am not someone who necessarily enjoys asking for help. But today I was carrying in a light, relatively light, piece of plywood. It's four feet by eight feet. I am 5'2". That was a little challenging. Um, and I started by saying, I'm going to do this myself. And then I saw, I'm going to end up smacking it on something and cracking it. So I actually asked my son to help me. And it worked a lot better. Okay. So they, they use... Planning, searching, learning, reflecting. So searching is, excuse me, while you're doing the, the work, you're paying attention to what's, what's, what's going on. Okay, you have, you've enabled, you're still asking for help. Okay, now you're, you're looking at your, your, you, you are looking at your learning. You are going into more details. You're putting ideas in order. You are rehearsing it and, and, and self-monitoring, you're, you're, you're actually studying it, and then you reflect. Okay, so that's just another way to look at this idea of self-regulated learning. This might be something new for you. It might be something that you've never really done, that you've always waited for somebody else to tell you how you've done. Uh, you, you take a test, okay, and... If someone says to you, how did you do? Do you always say, I don't know? You know, if I say, well, did you understand the reading? And then you do one of these, well, you tell me, you know, how did I do on the test? So the idea with self-regulated learning is you're not waiting for someone else to tell you. You are actually the one who is, sometimes you're wrong, but you are the one who is, who is gauging how much you're understanding. Okay, so <clears throat> what... <laughs> this is, and now what? So now with this really brief overview of self-regulated learning, what are you going to do with this? Well, I would ask you to take a look at the classes that you're taking. Once you've gone through this chapter, take a look at the classes you're taking and figure out how you can apply self-regulated learning to this 
uh, to, to the, those classes. Before we do this, I'm going to have you do some practice with self-regulated learning. And I'm going to have you practice in the field of <gasps> dun, 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 positive psychology. I am a huge fan of positive psychology. And I want to let you know that positive psychology is not don't worry, be happy. It's not everything happens for a reason. It's not if you, oh God, I can't think of what it's called, where it, you know, if you, if you really want something, you, you think about it a lot and it magically appears. I'm sorry that <clears throat> positive psychology and We'll, we'll talk about this more after you've done the reading. So you are going to read something by Sean Acor, who's at, at the end. <clears throat> but I wanted to tell you that, oh, I forgot to write this down. In 19, in the early 1990s, Martin Seligman, he is a positive, he is a psychologist. He works at the University of Pennsylvania. He was elected as the um, president of the American Psychological Association, and he said to all of these psychologists, we do a pretty good job of helping people who have problems get better. But what we don't do a good job on is looking at people who are who are functioning well and figuring out why are they functioning well and what can we learn from these people so that we can share it with other people. And that was the birth of positive psychology. Some positive, some popular press books on psychology use the word happiness instead. And that has kind of a bad name among positive psychologists because then people think of the yellow smiley face. And really, positive psychology is about well-being. Okay, so Martin Seligman, great ideas. He, he is uh, not a wonderful writer or speaker. So I'm not going to show you uh, his video because it's a little dull. Barbara Fredrickson is, I think, the University of Maryland. And she... Uh, I'm going to ask you to watch a short video uh, that she has done about what the effects of positive psychology are. And then we're going to look at uh, Sean Acor. So let me get out of there. Let me get out of here. Let me get to, to, oops, let me make sure I am in the right. Okay, yes, yes, yes. We saved the announcement. Great. Okay, so <clears throat> I want to show you what, it's, what it looks like in the textbook. So if you go to course content, Oh, I forgot. I had to redo this. And then you go to, okay, the online textbook. Do, 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 do. Chapter four is there. Okay, so that's good. Before you read that, well, I'm going to post the lecture here. Uh, well, okay. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Chapter four, I did something a little bit different. Rather than just having the video uh, I've got a whole folder. So this is what I want you to do first. I want you to watch this bar. I, I will reorder these. I want you to watch Barbara Fredrickson, How Positive Emotions Open Our Mind. <clears throat> then I'm going to ask you to read the first part of the chapter. And I want you to watch this video by Sean Acor called The Happy Secret to Better Work. It's a TED Talk. It is one of my favorite TED Talks. I will tell you, he speaks very fast. I believe the one that I uploaded has closed caption. So certainly feel free to turn it on. Or if you have to listen to it more than once, that's fine. I want you to listen to it because once you get a little an idea of what he's talking about, it's going to make reading Chapter 2, The Happiness Advantage, a lot easier easier. So what you're going to do, I'll go through this again, watch the Barbara Fredrickson, read the first part of the chapter, watch Shane, Sean Acor, then you're going to go into chapter two. When you click on it, it's uh, a, a link. I apologize. I just didn't, oops. Um, this is what you are going to see. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay. All right, and this is what I'm apologizing for. The first page is blank. I have no idea why. 
So when you get to the second page, what I did was I photocopied. <clears throat> yes, I know I broke copyright laws. I uh, photocopied a book. So what I, I suggest zooming it, I don't know, depending on your eyes, you know, like this. All right. Uh, it shouldn't be N. There should be the letter I. In 1543, Nicholas Copernicus published, I, I don't speak Latin, De Revolutionibus or Orbium Colestium. Okay. And what I'm gonna, what I'm asking you to do is to read the first. I think I said roughly the first eight pages. Pay attention to how you read. Make a plan. Go back. Read the next roughly eight pages. Okay. Um, it's it's a way for you to practice your self-regulation of learning. Okay. Um, the journal that you have this week is all about Sean Acor's work. So make sure you, you listen and you read. The discussion is all about learning, self-regulation of learning. What I have here is something from the math department that connects to self-regulation, preparing for your math test and how to study math. I was, I was supposed to have a video to a company this and it has been delayed as soon as it is available I will let you know okay please as I always say if you have any questions please ask me and I would be very happy to just um, email me message me within the course send me a text message to my Google number and I'm I'm very willing to help to explain things how whatever you need all right. I hope you have a good evening and I'm sure I will be talking to you soon or hearing from you soon.